Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rob Livick, and I'm the Public Works Director. I want to welcome you to the um, EIR scoping meeting for the water reclamation facility. And thank you all for coming, and hope uh, we get some very good comments from everybody. And I'm going to turn it over now to John Rickenbach, who's the Deputy Project Manager um, for this project. And uh, he's going to make a brief presentation to introduce the rest of the team. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Rob. I'm John Rickenbach. You know me, I think. And uh, it's really good to have the good turnout that we have here today. Um, just very briefly, what I just want to get a sense of, or have you get a sense of, we're here to listen. Um, the whole point of this meeting today is to take notes from our end, and it's to get input on what ought to be in the environmental impact report for this project. Um, I'm not going to say much more about that. I'm going to leave that to our environmental impact report team, and I want to introduce them. We have Jennifer Jacobus, who's the project manager from ESA, who is going to be doing the environmental impact report for this project, and Tom Barnes, who is the, um, the program manager for it, ESA. So we have the ESA team here to listen. Um, they're going to be preparing this. It's, it's going to take several months. It'll be, you'll get to know them over the next year. Um, but today, this is really the beginning of the process here. And as I say, we know that you, you'll have a lot of things to say. What I'd like to ask or make you focus a little bit is we're trying to take input on the issues we need to study in the environmental impact report. We know you have feelings about the project and the location and a lot of things, and those are fine. You can talk about those. But we do really need to understand, should we be looking at specific issues that we may have missed? Jennifer will talk about the ones we know we're going to be talking about already. But for right now, um, we'll be scrambling and taking a lot of notes here, and she'll give you a lot of logistics. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer, and um, we're looking forward some, to some good input from you. Thank you, John. I'm Jennifer Jacobus with ESA. Uh, I'm going to jump right in here with a presentation. I'm going to give a brief presentation, and then we're going to open this up to the floor um, for folks to give us their comments. Uh, so just a brief overview. I'm going to start out, again, just reiterating the purpose of the meeting. John has touched on a brief overview of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. Um, I'll present briefly the uh, overview of the project and the objectives and the project description. Um, I'll provide you with the list of the environmental topics that the EIR um, is expected to include. Um, and... I'll also be sharing you sort of a next 12 months look ahead on the schedule so you can know what to expect. And then um, we'll get to the public comment part of the meeting. So as uh, John mentioned, the purpose of the meeting is to initiate the CEQA process. So the city has issued the notice of preparation, which there's copies of in the back. I see all, most of you have taken. Um, this notice initiates the CEQA process along with this scoping meeting. Um, it's the notice that we're preparing this environmental impact report for the water reclamation facility. Um, I'm going to just describe the project as it's described in the NOP, which is the amount of information we have at this point. Um, the WRF, or water reclamation facility, um, is going to be replacing the existing wastewater treatment plant, the Morro Bay Cayucos wastewater treatment plant, and building a new uh, water reclamation facility to provide tertiary treatment for the wastewater uh, produced within the boundaries of the city of Morro Bay. And lastly, so this is a scoping meeting. The intent of the scoping meeting is to get your input. Um, and so we'll get to that shortly. So the California Environmental Quality Act, just briefly, is a California law that requires public agencies to uh, go through an environmental compliance process for all of their projects. Um, it requires a number of things. It requires disclosure of potentially significant impacts to the environment as a result of implementing their project. Um, CEQA also provides a decision-making tool. So it requires public agencies to consider these significant impacts prior to approving a project. Um, it also then requires, um, once impacts are identified, it requires uh, uh, 
the identification then of mitigation measures or alternatives to the project that can mitigate uh, any impacts. So how do we do all that? For this project, we're going to be preparing an environmental impact report or an EIR, and this graphic uh, shows an overview of that process. It's a three-step process. There's a notice of preparation or NOP, which is the green. Then we have a draft EIR, which is in blue. And then we have a final EIR, which is what you see in orange. So right now, we're in the first step of this process, which <clears throat> is initiating the scoping with the issuance of this NOP. The NOP is circulated for 30 days for public comment. So during that t any point during this 30-day period, you can send an email or a letter. You can comment today at this meeting on what you want to see in the environmental impact report. Uh, once that scoping period is over, we're going to start preparing the draft environmental impact report, which will take a number of months. Um, once it's done, and I'll get more, uh, we'll show you the schedule towards the end, but once that's done, there will be another similar notice that will be published announcing the availability of that draft report. It'll be out for public review for 45 days. We'll similarly have a public meeting like this to take your input. Um, and that then at the end of the 45 days, that draft EIR period is, uh, step is completed. The final EIR step, we take all of your comments from the draft EIR and the city will review them and will provide written responses to the comments. And together with the draft EIR, that will make up the final EIR, which is what the city council then uh, reviews and certifies. And that is the conclusion of the CEQA process. Um, one thing to note, the difference between the comment periods for the NOP, the NOP, we don't respond individually to NOP comment letters. The draft EIR is essentially the response to the comments that we get during scoping. When you submit a comment letter during the draft EIR, then there are actual written responses to those comments, just to distinguish between those two. So like I said, the notice of preparation has been published. Um, this is required by CEQA to announce the EIRs being prepared. It starts the scoping process. It allows us to get stakeholder input from, from the public, from you, and also from uh, state and local agencies as well. And this helps for us to focus the content of the EIR and to focus on uh, the concerns of the public and the <clears throat> state agencies. So as you probably know, uh, the WRF project, project overall is intended to replace the existing wastewater treatment plant. So the uh, existing treatment plant will be decommissioned. Um, and instead, the city and Cayuco Sanitary District will each be implementing their own uh, individual treatment plants. So uh, the WRF project for the city will provide tertiary treatment for all wastewater effluent within the city, and the Cayuco Sanitary District will, will be implementing their own separate project to treat the effluent that's produced within their uh, boundaries. This map shows the location of the uh, proposed WRF location for the city. This is the site that we're going to be evaluating in the environmental impact report. It's located a little north of, you can see it's this sort of white shaded area over here. It's located north of um, Highway 1. This is um, South Bay Boulevard down here. And this is uh, identifying the location of the existing wastewater treatment plant that's going to be decommissioned. And there's a map. This map is also included in the NOP that you have. Uh, the objectives of the project are to produce tertiary disinfected wastewater in accordance with the California Code of Regulations Title, title 22, which provides the requirements for uh, unrestricted urban irrigation. These are, and these are objectives, again, also in the NOP that you have. Um, the objective is to produce reclaimed wastewater for potential users, such as uh, landscape, private and public landscape areas, agricultural irrigation, uh, and groundwater recharge. Another objective is to ensure compatibility with neighboring land uses and to design the project to treat contaminants of emerging concern in the future 
to design the project for optimal energy recovery and also to allow for other possible municipal functions at the, the new WRF site. Overall, the project's gonna be implemented in two phases. Um, phase one is uh, going to, we're, they're gonna build a new treatment facility that will meet all of the requirements of the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Um, it will allow for the decommissioning of the existing treatment plant. And uh, during phase one, the existing ocean outfall, which is where the um, effluent from the existing treatment plant is currently discharged, will continue to be used for discharge from the new plant. The components of phase one will include the tertiary treatment facility um, and a new force main pipeline and a pump station. Essentially, the pipeline will connect the existing treatment plant with the new WRF. It will bring the effluent up to the new site for treatment and bring the effluent back out to the ocean outfall. Uh, the phase one components are being developed through the facility master plan, which some of you may have uh, been involved with that process up until this point. Um, we have uh, John Rickenbach and the other consultant teams are overseeing development of this facility master plan. So that plan is expected to be uh, released by the end of this year, December 2016. And the description of the project in that plan is what we will use uh, as our project description and what we will we'll be evaluating in the EIR. Phase two of the project will focus on reclamation and reuse of the recycled water. Um, and this is gonna provide an augmentation to the city's water supply um, and will also reduce some discharge through the ocean, ocean outfall as the water that gets produced at the new plant will be reused for irrigation or recharge. Um, the components of that will include some additional advanced treatment facilities at the new WRF site, and depending on the end users of that recycled water, some additional infrastructure such as pipelines in order to bring the recycled water to the, to the end users. Um, phase two is being uh, developed through the, pr the preparation of a master reclamation plan. Uh, this plan is going to be the draft plan is expected to be released in March of next year. Uh, there'll be some public workshops during the process of developing this plan. There will also be workshops during development of the facility master plan as well. So you will be seeing these um, plans before they show up in our EIR. But again, so um, the d details of the, of the reclamation and reuse as they get developed in the reclamation plan will is what we will use to incorporate into the description for what gets analyzed in the EIR. So just to look ahead towards the EIR itself, um, these are the environmental topics that we are expecting to include in the environmental impact analysis. So CEQA requires us to evaluate direct and indirect and cumulative impacts to a number of resources um, that include aesthetics, air quality, agriculture and forestry, biological resources, cultural resources, geology, soils and seismicity, greenhouse gas emissions, hazards and hazardous materials, hydrology, water quality, land use and planning, noise, population and housing, public services, traffic, transportation, utilities, and energy. So that's the suite of environmental topics that we are planning to um, include in the EIR. So we'll develop our project description and evaluate how construction and operation of the new project will affect these resources. Other requirements for the EIR um, include a growth inducement analysis, so we'll be analyzing um, impacts to future population and growth in Morro Bay as a result of the project. <clears throat> An alternatives analysis is also required in the EIR, so we will be including uh, an overview of the extensive um, alternative screening process that has uh, the city has undertaken over the last couple of years. We will certainly be providing an overview of that process to tell the story of how we ended up here at this location. 
um, will be providing a no project alternative, which is a CEQA requirement. And then once we have determined what the significant impacts of the project are, we'll be looking similar to mitigation measures. Uh, we'll also be considering alternatives that might be able to be implemented in order to avoid any potentially significant impacts um, that, result, that might result as part of the project. So the overall schedule, right now we're in the NOP comment period, which runs through September 7th. Um, once that period closes, um, the facility master plan is still being, oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, I lost it. Um, OK. <laughs> Um, the facility master plan is going to be, process is going to be ongoing. Sorry, I fast forwarded too quickly. Perfect. Thank you. I won't touch that. Okay, the facility master plan is being developed. This shows that going through the end of 2016, December 2016. Right now, there's an estimated uh, date for October uh, for a public workshop to present the draft facility master plan. The reclamation plan is also ongoing through March of 2017. And there will also be, again, a, a public workshop to present um, the draft master reclamation plan to the public. While that's ongoing, we'll be preparing the draft EIR. And right now, we're expecting um, in July of 2017 that the draft EIR will be released. Um, and we're showing a 45-day public review period in the August to September of 2017 timeframe. And there will be another public meeting as well during that 45 days. And then final EIR preparation with in October and November with final EIR certification in November of 2017. So um, just to reiterate, the scoping period right now ends on September 7th. So that means that comments can be provided to us at any time between now and that date through email or through uh, written uh, mailed comments. Um, the NOP is available online. It's also available here tonight. Um, we are going to open this up now for you to provide us with comments now tonight. We have comment cards available um, that were back on the table. If you are not ready to provide us with oral comments, you can take that card with you so you have the, the contact information. You can write down your comment and hand it to us today before you leave, um, or we're going to open up the floor right now for, um, for oral comments. And as John uh, mentioned, we're going we're to turn the podium around so you can come up and, um, and speak into the mic, if you will, to provide us with your comments. We'd like to focus on what you want to see included or analyzed in the EIR. And we're going to take that with us and, con and consider that as we're preparing the EIR. And, and just um, one question to get a sense of how many people would, are interested in talking. There's no, it's not like a Brown Act council meeting. You're not limited in time. But uh, can we have a basic show of hands, how many people plan to get up and say something? OK, it's not that many. So you have plenty of time to do that. I just wanted to make sure we had enough time for everybody to say what they wanted to say. Any volunteers for, uh, please um, feel free to come up and if you would make your comment at the podium, it will be recorded. I'm gonna, my, my name is Tom. I am also going to uh, record it up here on the, on the uh, board so you can see what we're hearing. Um, my name's John Mino. Um, being the closest landowner to the proposed 
WRF, I have many concerns regarding the project. Certainly making sure the facility and road access is properly fenced, screened, and made to aesthetically fit with the agricultural surroundings are extremely important. Providing the maximum physical buffer to my property is also essential for the protection of our agricultural operation. Without seeing the facility master plan, it is difficult to comment completely in regard to these issues at this time. The NOP on page five has a list called project need and objectives. Six objectives are listed. All but one appear to make sense. I take issue with the fifth objective, designed to allow for other possible municipal functions at the WRF site. I believe a more appropriate objective would be to minimize the conversion of agriculturally zoned land to non-agricultural uses. The present NOP stated objective of allowing other possible municipal functions at the site is vague and of concern as to what the potential impact would be in the future. One that thing that would seem to be clear is that the footprint of the site would have to be expanded in order to allow for these types of future uses. Site expansion would only serve to increase the conversion of productive agricultural land to uses theoretically not allowed in the coastal agricultural zone and to make buffering and hiding the facility more difficult. One use that has been suggested previously is for a corporate yard to be included on the site. If that were the case, valuable agricultural soils would be paved and no longer have the ability to absorb runoff or to be used for productive agriculture. In their place would be a non-permeable surface with the potential for increased storm runoff and associated pollution to the estuary from vehicle, gas, and oil leaks. The current corporate yard is centrally located in the city. Moving the yard to this more ro remote location would increase vehicle miles traveled with resulting pollution, traffic, and neighbor conflict issues. There is ample room within the existing city boundary for such uses. I would respectfully submit that municipal uses should stay in the area they are zoned for and not expand it out to areas less appropriate for such activities. Having a sewer facility next to a property is not anything we had anticipated. The location chosen, even with mitigation, will have many undesirable effects for us. I would request that the city be a good neighbor and not add further uses other than those absolutely necessary for the operation and maintenance of the WRF. My name's uh, <clears throat> Ed Sylvester. Lived in the town here about 40 years. And uh, you mentioned that uh, they were going to disable the plant at its location right now. If you dismantle it, like you're saying, how is the sewer going to get from the lower lands to the upper lands without having a collection area? Because the way I understand what you said, you are going to dismantle the collection area too. Is uh, our sewer going to fly over the hill? Because you're dismantling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be, there will be a pump station that will, uh, and a pipeline from the existing plant location. Uh, existing plant. Okay. From the existing plant to bring it up to the new plant. Yeah, but you said you're dismantling it. And replaced it with the pump station. Yeah, the, essentially the collection no, system. The no, collection system. What, what happens when there's a failure? I want to know that. Well, that's a good comment. We'll write that one right down. But to clarify, the, the decommissioning of the plant wouldn't happen until we have the collection system in place to serve the new site. 
So we, we, we appreciate that comment, though, and that last comment in particular was a good environmental comment. Uh, okay. Not when, if, or not if, it's when. There is a spill on the hill with raw sewage. Is it still going to keep going up the hill or is it going to run down the hill? Now, if it runs down the hill, I don't know if anybody's taken a look at where it's going to go. It's going to go down by the hospital, raw sewage. It's going to go under the freeway. It's going to go on top of the ground and back of the trailer park under Quintana into our watershed. And environmentally, that should stop the whole system right there. This system should not be built, period. Not in the place where they want to build it because when there is a spill, raw sewage is going to run into our back bay. Period. Our sewer plant survived a lot of tidal waves and it can and it was going to be rebuilt and built new. It was already paid for until our mayor got a hold of it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Melinda Elster, and I am a member of the Morro Bay community for many years. And I would like to thank all the people in this room who've worked a long time on this project. It's very complicated, and I appreciate you've had a lot of advisory people, and a lot of good work has gone into this project. Um, the three issues that I am concerned about from an environmental perspective is um, that, as you've stated, all the alternative sites that have been stated in some of the prior documents would be put on a level playing field with the TriW and everybody would evaluate them accordingly, um, which I believe the CEQA process would include. Um, the second concern I have is because you're moving everything outside of the city into the county and the distances involved are much increased that there will be a much greater energy impact in terms of greenhouse gas production. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was one of the factors that was considered in all the other sites. And obviously this is going to have the greatest impact to the community and to the larger area. Um, I agree with Mr. Mino about the rather incompatible use of establishing a utility facility in amongst an agricultural landscape. And so I would like to um, express my concern that the master facility plan include in great detail any other potential development because I believe the best possible solution is the smallest footprint possible. So whatever environmental impacts you have, and there will be, and they are going to be large, will be cons as constrained as possible. And I share Mr. Sylvester's concern about what's going to happen with the sewage spill, because sadly, it's going to be a win, not an if. And I worked as an NEP volunteer for many years testing water at two of those sites right downhill from TriW. The cleanest water was always at Twin Bridges. The other water up the Choro Creek was consistently at a higher level of pollution because of the sewage spills that happen at Cuesta College. So it's an impacted watershed already because of the existing sewage facilities up the road. Um, so I do share that concern because it's a very short distance to the estuary program. Um, 
So to reiterate, I would like a very detailed description of everything that will be or could be built at that site. Because otherwise, it is scoping creep to say, mm -hmm. oh, a general municipal facility doesn't include anything the rest of us could make a comment upon. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm Bruce Elster, longtime resident, downtown business and property owner. Um, I've had a fair amount of experience in uh, projects with environmental impact evaluations. And in this one, one of the things that I noticed, and I think it's a, a large omission, is in the topics that to be evaluated. It doesn't include anything to say specifically about economic impacts. And I concur with Ed Sylvester. The sewage is not going to fly over the hill to the facility. You're going to have to pump it. The pumping is going to create a long-term lifetime cost, as well as any pumping of treated effluent back to wherever it would be disposed or recharged is going to create an additional cost. Uh, in a review of the documents, it appears that this is going to create roughly twice the cost in terms of operation of the facility. That needs to be examined in real detail. In terms of the previous uh, evaluated sites, uh, by all measures and what I have seen, all of the other sites on a critically objective scale appeared to be more desirable than the one that was selected, which makes this site appear to be um, politically expedient. And I believe that if you put the question to or polled the entire community as to whether they would prefer to have the operation occur at this site or if they would prefer to have a, a site that was going to cost them roughly half of the utility cost over the life of the project, I suspect that hands down you'd like to, that the community would prefer to have the site located elsewhere. This does not appear to me to be an appropriate site. I would suggest that the other alternatives, if this is going to go forward, be evaluated on an equivalent scale to the same level of detail so that at the end of the day when you do publish the EIR that the community can look at it not as a uh, project EIR with alternatives briefly evaluated, but evaluated fully to the same level as the site that you are going to be evaluating. Thank you. Thank you. Gina Metzger, Morro Bay. A um, couple things. I don't see a calendar in here. Um, oh, the, yeah, the schedule is not in is not in the NOP. That's correct. We can put a schedule up um, on the website. The schedule okay. from the presentation. Yes. Okay, great to plan ahead. Thank you. Yeah, good comment. Yes. Um, for those of us that would like to attend meetings and. Um, dead, ha, know the deadlines and so forth. I'm concerned about your criteria for choosing the alternative sites to this one, and I haven't seen any um, literature on what criteria you're going to use. Obviously, you're probably not going to have all 17 plus sites in the EIR, so I'd like to know um, how you're going to choose the, what, two, three, four alternative sites you're going to have in the EIR? Um, I mean, in general, the, the way the process um, goes is the, the impacts that are identified drive <laughs> largely the alternatives analysis. So depending on the impacts that we come up with, like mitigation measures, there's no set number of alternatives that we don't know right now how many alternatives we will have. It'll be dependent on the impacts we have and 
what we're looking to mitigate for by considering um, other sites or other designs. There's more than just other locations that are part of the alternatives as well. So how will you narrow down those alternatives when the time comes? I, I the, think from the 17 plus alternatives? Th these are good questions. I, I think what Jennifer said is exactly right. Um, every project is going to be different. Um, once we identify impacts and understand what those are and what it is we're trying to address, I think that, that frames uh, the alternatives, not just the alternative sites, but alternative designs. Uh, right now it's premature to understand exactly what those are, but I think we understand your concern is you want to understand, and I think we'll clearly lay out the process of how those alternatives were developed through the EIR process. But as in any EIR, you really don't know what those are until you get into the analysis itself. And about date-wise, when do you think that will be? Again, the EIR process, um, the draft EIR can't really start getting into great detail till we have the facility master plan, which won't, we won't have that till toward the end of this year, and the reclamation plan comes at the beginning of next year. Draft EIR is being prepared to the extent possible through then. The analysis of those follows. When we get to the draft EIR stage is typically when we really release all that information, which we're looking at in the summer of next year. So are you saying that the decision for naming the alternatives won't happen until when? Again, the focus of the project is the South Bay Boulevard site. The alternatives come out as a result of the analysis of that. So typically, and this is true of any EIR, uh, alternatives are framed as you do the analysis and you really don't have that information clearly understood until the draft EIR. And, and keep in mind that even in the draft EIR responses, alternatives can be reframed or new ones added as a result of um, comments that come forward from the public or from agencies to consider other issues that had not been considered before. It's very, it's very much a fluid process. So um, it's really not possible to, to frame that in terms of a hard and fast schedule right now. I mean, the, the alternative analysis will be presented to the public in the draft EIR. If, if, that's, is that, if that's what you're trying to figure. Well, I know there's a huge amount of people that are just wondering how long this is going to be hanging over our heads concerning the Rigetti property. We, we would like to have it off your list as an alternative. I've made that clear, everyone's made that clear. And we would like to know when we don't have to worry about this anymore. When we don't have to, um, I mean, there are quite a few people that are now selling their homes that will have to disclose this. We want to know when this whole hammer over our head will be over with. We'd so also, that's our concern. We'd also like to acknowledge that, um, and thank you for sending all the letters that you had sent before to that effect um, from earlier this year. Those are all part of the NOP responses. So we do have a packet of letters from the neighborhood and from others who've, who've responded on the point. So uh, we appreciate that. That's going to be in the consideration as we move forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is George Trevelyan. I'm the owner of Grassy Bar Oyster Company in Morro Bay. And uh, I just wanted to uh, voice my concern about having another wastewater treatment plant in the estuary where our shellfish culture operations are going on. And uh, we currently have to deal with the CMC and their, their affluent discharge and uh, it's a long, it's been a long-term uh, work and battle and working alongside the estuary program 
to try to ensure the water quality in the estuary is sufficient for raising oysters and other shellfish. And so uh, adding another uh, treatment facility in the, in the watershed there is a concern. So I see that your plan is to, to not discharge anything into the estuary, which is very good. Um, and that you're going to continue using the ocean outfall for the treated effluent uh, and then try to reduce the amount or, or try to reuse that water, which is great. Um, but I would like an some to know in the design assurances of during adverse conditions, spills and that kind of thing, or what will happen? Will it, will it go down the hill to the, you know, Costa de Flores <laughs> elderly place and down past them into the estuary? Or are you going to have a way to prevent that from even being a possibility? Um, so that's my concern. Right, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, name's Russ Banner, um, 1800 Quintana Road. That's the first house downwind from this facility. So that obviously I'm concerned. I want to know what happened to the Highway 41 proposal. That was where I thought it was going to be, and it's obviously a better idea to have it on Highway 41 if you're pumping from the old. Was this decided uh, because of the environment or because of lawyers pushing it somewhere else? Again, that it's a good. I mean, it's a good question, but it's right now we're talking about environmental issues per se. The first one you had about um, odors and wind is a very good one. Um, the decision to start studying at the site right here came out as a result of a long process that's taken over three years to get to this point. Um, had a lot of input to get along the way to where we are. We are examining the South Bay Boulevard site in depth in the EIR, and that process. Um, the, the point we're at now is to figure out what the impacts are of doing that. At the end of all that, then the council's in a position to decide, is this the right place to do it? So that's, that's all I can really say at this point. How firm is this location? How firm? It sounds like this it, is it's, it. You know, This is, this is the site to be analyzed in the EIR and a facility master plan, and it's if it can be mitigated and designed properly, um, it's the preferred site for the council at this point. We'll, we'll see what happens as a result of the process. Any process, you know, that, that's why we go through it, to, to deal with things we don't know right now. Hmm. Yeah, I still don't understand why it wasn't put on Highway 41. Is there an answer to that? Or? I think there's a series of, you know, the, the council and the uh, team went through a process and it there's multiple documents that have gone through Does a sort the of a... Does council live on Highway 41? <laughs> I appreciate the comments. We, we understand your concerns about the location, uh, where it is relative to where you live. We understand that. And, and the environmental impact that you suggested that you're downwind, are there other concerns you have relative, um, environmental concerns relative to your house and the location of the site, just besides odor and air quality, presumably. I haven't got any at the moment, but I'll think of plenty. And we'd love to hear them. Please send us a note and an email to that effect. Any other comments? Going once, okay. going twice? Okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, we're going to close the meeting. And uh, we appreciate you coming. 
and um, giving you giving us your input. And, and again, just as, as a reminder, um, we do have some. Uh, Maybe there's some extra NOPs at the back, but online we have the same information. September 7th is the date we're looking to have all your comments in, either via email or letter, and we really look forward to having that. Thanks for the great turnout today.